Oh, 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 yeah. oh, 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 Wait a minute, girl, can you slow down? Wait a minute, girl, what's the rush now? I wanna introduce myself to you. My name is the one on one guy, you the preferred now. I like the way you put your fists together. I like the way you do your hair in the morning. I see why all the boys want you, girl. YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another Washington Commanders video. And in today's video, I'm coming on here with a video where we're going to be talking more about the offensive line. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL, or in this case, our Washington Commanders. Want to roll to 6,000 subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button again if you haven't already. Also, check out Juan Gotti TV. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers over there. It's free. Go ahead and subscribe over there. All right, let's talk about it. Offensive line. As we know, Washington revamped tremendously this offensive line. Uh, this past offseason, I should say. Now, obviously, none of these guys have played together yet, but it cannot be any worse than what it was last year. That's essentially what we try to say. I'll tell ourselves every single year, right? Um, Washington, they got things going with getting Andrew Wiley and Nick Gates in free agency. Then they continue getting Ricky Stromberg, letting go of Chase Roulier, uh, Brayden Daniels in the draft, and they already had some returning guys like Chris Paul and obviously Sadiq Charles. Now, I want to specifically highlight that left guard battle because Ron Rivera made it uh, abundantly clear that that is what that battle is for. That battle is between those two guys, Dick Charles and Chris Paul, for starting left guard. Um, you look at the offensive line right now, I think we could really do a good job at assembling the rest of the line and who we think is going to be starting day one, week one versus Arizona. Center, I think it's going to be uh, Ricky Stromberg. I think right guard is going to obviously be Samuel Cosme. Right tackle, Andrew Wiley. Left tackle is going to be Charles Leno. Now, left guard is that only open position, right? It's between Sadiq Charles and Chris Paul. According to this article, we're going to take a look at it. Uh, they said Sadiq Charles is in the early runnings, but Chris Paul isn't too far behind. This is written by Washington's beat reporter, senior writer, Zach Sills. Since the Washington Commanders restructured and reshuffled the offensive line, uh, is full of new faces. But there's really one, only one position up front that remains undecided for now. Washington offensive line was in need of an upgrade after the injuries derailed the group for the most of the 2020 season and much of the team's financial resources and the draft capital went into finding those answers. As center Nick Gates replaced longtime veteran Chase Roulier, who only played 10 games since uh, the 2020 season. Andrew Wiley was brought in to be the star and right tackle, which bumped Sam Cosme to right guard. Ricky Schomburg and Brayden Daniels were drafted in the third and fourth round picks, respectively, to provide depth as rookies. Left tackle Charles Leno is the only player on the star line to remain in his original position. That leaves left guard, and as of now, Sadiq Charles and Chris Paul are the only two players head coach Ron Rivera has mentioned as being in serious contention for that spot. Both are doing whatever they can to give themselves an edge. Sadiq had really done a nice job. But no, Chris Paul really just nipping at the heels at, uh, as of right now. And all of our laws, as Ron Rivera has said, it is difficult to give a full evaluation at any position at this time of the year when contact is prohibited. But things are particularly uh, murky when it comes to the offensive line. Players can fine-tune their technique in the pass blocking, but physicality is an important part of their roles uh, that just cannot be judged until pass come on in August. For now, though, Chris, uh, Charles has taken all the star reps at left guard. Paul is backing him up. A fourth-round pick from the 2020 season uh, draft, I should say. Charles was brought in from LSU and was expected to be uh, that he would solidify Washington's offensive line in the foreseeable future. Um, that reality has been far different. Charles moved from tackle to guard and injured has limited him to just uh, eight starts in 24 games. There has never been a doubt from the coaching staff that Charles has the skill set to be a meaningful contributor to this offensive line unit. The past three years, availability has been his biggest challenge, though. As you guys know, I say that all the time. We talk about Sadiq Charles. It's not that he's not talented. He just hasn't been out there. And as we know, availability is your best ability. Uh, that always seemed to be the issue, Rivera said. If you go back and look at the time he played, um, some something has come up, whether it's been the calf, it's been the ankle, it's been the shoulder. You just hope that he can stay healthy because he has the skill set to be really good. Much of Charles' offseason work has been focused on fixing that issue. He spent most of his time working out 
at the commander's facility and changing up his diet. The results, he said, has been tremendous, and he feels noticeable differences in his strengths and health. The work he's put in earned himself the opportunity to find uh, to be first to get the first shot at being the starting left guard. And part of the reward involves going up against pro bowlers like Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. Charles has managed to hold his own against one of the best defensive fronts in football, which has led to some praise from River and offensive coordinator Eric B. Enemy. Charles has made it clear, though, his actions on and off the field that he uh, has taken his opportunity serious. I want to win this spot, Charles said. I want to prove it to my teammates and coaches and play to my best capability. After reading that article, you got the sense of what's been going on in Washington's practices lately. City Charles obviously the starting guy right now, but that could very well change. Let's say Chris Paul has a, um, a really good training camp. City Charles kind of slowing down or doesn't have a strong of a camp or preseason. Then you can find a way that Chris Paul could be a starter. But I fully expect City Charles to win that win that battle. I think Chris Paul is going to be really really good depth though. Um and. What better depth to have within at the left guard position? Because you know what City Charles' his injury history, you know it's not certain that he can stay healthy at 417 games, that he hasn't proven it. So with a guy like Chris Paul right there to back him up and saying he's right at the nip of the heels of Sadiq Charles, that could speak volumes to how much close he is to being a potential starting guy. So if in the event that we do have an injury at left or right guard, Chris Paul can step right in and uh, we don't miss a beat. So again, I love to see that City Charles finally getting his opportunity. Now, I am a guy that was a big fan of City Charles coming out of LSU. I really, really liked the pick, and I thought he was going to be really good for us right then and there. But obviously, again, as we know, injuries has hindered that opportunity. But now he has the opportunity of a lifetime. This is his last chance, really. And I, and I, I think I even said that before we even drafted uh, Brayden Daniels, all those guys. I said that early, early off. I'm like, this is Chris Paul's last, I mean, not Chris Paul, this is the Charles' last opportunity to show what he can do because we have gave him opportunity after opportunity, and it's not that his skill has been the issue. It's been his health. It's been his health. So if he can come in, just give me 15 out of 17. 15 out of 17, you the man for the future, you know? I just want him to be out there for a majority of the snaps. Because Sadiq Charles has the perfect... He's like, he, To me, I know he was a left tackle at LSU, right? But to me, he's the perfect guard. Like, he's the... You know the new wave of guards is like not too not not big. You're small, but you're athletic. You can pull. You can get out in space. He's that perfect guy. Cause Sidney Charles is a skinny dude. Like when when I say skinny, I'm talking skinny when we're talking offensive line guys. You see Sidney Charles, bro. He's not fat. Like he's skinny, right? Um, when it comes to offensive line, so he has that proper guard built now where he can go out in space again. Yeah. He, 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 his physicality may not be there because he's not that strong of a guy, so he may have some type of pushback when it comes to certain passes and longer development plays, but that can always come, come, you know, get better. You can always get stronger, right? Your technique can always get better. And I'm pretty sure they're working with him, knowing that he is an undersized offensive lineman. They are probably working with him to to teach him how to you know, defend of those bigger defensive linemen that's going to come with a lot of force. And again, he's he's guarding the two best guys that you can possibly practice with in Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. So anything that he faces in the NFL this season shouldn't be that hard of a task. If I'm looking at our schedule, I think the people that he practices with. Uh, are going to be the toughest people he play against. Uh, really, uh, speaking of, if I now I can't remember all the games off the top of my head, so we may come a, a point where we're starting to memorize the schedule week by week. That you may be like, oh, you know, they they have a really good defensive line unit. But if I can remember, Washington um, has one of the toughest defensive linemen groups that out there. So he's going to be good when it comes to facing guys like now. I can remember off the top of my head, Atlanta. They got. Obviously, Calais Campbell, 55-year-old Calais Campbell, uh, who can bring some force. I think they still have Grady Jarrett on this. So that's a solid little group, too. Um, but for the most part, I'm excited, man. Uh, I think Sadiq Charles finally is going to do this thing, man. I've been waiting for his arrival since 2020. And that's that, that, that goes to show you, right? Just be patient. Your time going to come, bro. As long as you show up, as long as you do the right thing, you going, you know what I'm saying? Your time gonna come. You just gotta stay down, right? He trusted the process, for real, for real. 
uh, changing up his diet, staying around Commander's Park all the often. Like, I don't, you know, no guys typically, they go home, back to their home area for the off season. He stayed up here uh, or down in VA. So he was serious about winning this job, and he's continuing to be serious, and he's impressed the coaching staff so far with his ability. So I'm really excited to see what he could bring for training camp and the preseason, that is going to be the battle that I watch a lot. Like, I know we talk about it every year. There's so many battles. Like, I just made the video about KJ Henry um, and the edge rushing department. Left guard is another battle that I'm looking forward to. It's so much tight ends. I cannot wait to train at camp and preseason stop, man. We got a while to wait uh, to go, though, at the end of July, and it's only June 10th. So we got a little, a little, with a little bit of a wait. But we're going to get there soon, man. But there you have it. Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section down below. What you think about Sadiq Charles? Do you have confidence that he can get this left guard spot held down? Or are you a Chris Paul fan? Let me know what y'all think about it. As always, me and Boy and Wine Gotti, like, comment, subscribe, hail to the Washington Commanders. Want to roll to 6,000 subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button again if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to check out Juan Gotti TV. That link is down below in the description. I'm trying to hit, hit 100 subscribers on that page. It is totally free. So go ahead and subscribe over there. See y'all next time. Peace. We the kings of the east. I hope you hear what I'm saying. The DMV behind you, commanders. Now it's time to start in the field and take command. 1932, we was established. We've been running the NFCs every year after life. We got the best fans in the league. You cut through our skin, it's burning gold where we bleed. Cause hell to the commanders, we the best in the league. We fight for DC and the whole DMV. We got a new name, but still got the same rings, though. We got a new name, but still on the same mission, though. And that's the worst of both. We ring for back to the city.